We have uh, tonight, 5.30 from Milwaukee, we have game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. It's a busy day for him, so we really appreciate his time. Joining us right now, the uh, the voice of the Bucks, Jim Paschke. Jim, it's Dave, it's Kyle, it's Jay. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you this morning? Great, gentlemen. Great to be with you. Beautiful day in Milwaukee, mid-60s. We're ready to go. Hey. Oh, it sounds wonderful. Well, it's mid-60s out here. We're going to get rain, <laughs> oh, of, of all yeah. things. Wait. But uh, I'm, I'm wondering, Jim, do you – it seems like, do you have to practice and remember how to call a game? Do the players have to remember how to play basketball? It seems like with every, all the drama in the NBA, it's been, it's, been, it's been a while since we've seen the Bucks in action. Exactly one week. Uh, they closed out Boston last Wednesday, and uh, so they've had a full week off. And, of course, leading into uh, the second-round series with the Celtics, they struggled in Game 1 after having five days off, so... That is part of the story tonight. We're going to have to see if they uh, figured that out, and I believe they have. And then we'll see how Toronto uh, starts this round after uh, what they went through in Game 7 with that great shot by Kawhi Leonard. That had to hype them up a little bit. We'll see how it plays out tonight, but that's always a factor. You know, before we get back to the X's and O's, uh, Jim, I, I just want to say out in Sacramento, I think a lot of Kings fans have a soft spot. Uh, for Bucks fans, uh, those fans were going through n- not exactly what we were, but but s- a- at least almost. You know, there were there was talk about uh, w- uh, you know Mr. Simon and and maybe not getting an arena and oh could Milwaukee relocate and small markets are oftentimes pushed aside by your bigger markets like the fans don't matter. Not only do you guys have a sparkling new arena, but you have maybe the best player in the game, certainly the best young player in the game in Giannis, and, and, and you're four games away from, from getting into the finals, eight from getting a championship. It's got to be a real fun feeling right now with the fans in Milwaukee. Well, it certainly is. Everybody's very excited. It has been 18 years since the Bucks played this deep into the playoffs. They were in the Eastern Conference Finals and lost in seven games to Philadelphia in 2001. Uh, so it's been a long time coming, and uh, you know we had some lean years in the last 18, and fans have really embraced this. Everything has come together to have this solid of a team, a 60-victory team, have one of the best players in the game and the world in Giannis Antetokounmpo, and a new building all come together at the same time is a blueprint that you could probably dream about and think about, but I don't know how often that's going to happen. But in this case, everything came together at precisely the right time. And it has, it's been exhilarating, and uh, it, it just rolls on here. And it's great for the city and great for the state. And you drew a parallel between Milwaukee and Sacramento that I think is very appropriate. Uh, you know, some struggles, new building, and I like your young team out there too. So uh, keep the faith. It happens. You just have to grind away at it. It'll happen for Sacramento also. That's, uh, that's Jim Paschke with us saying some things that I think a lot of Sacramento Kings fans have fingers crossed and are, are hoping to hear. In, you look at the roster. The, this is such a – I don't know how else to put it, Jim. This is such a likable roster. A lot of teams out there, uh, Houston, Golden State, you know, they, they, there are players – on the teams that it's easy to, to root against some of these guys if you're an NBA fan. I, I don't know who to root against if I even tried for Milwaukee. Obviously, Giannis is extremely likable. But then you've got guys like Dante DiVincenzo, uh, Nikola Miritich. What an amazing acquisition. It, it really does seem like what, what this team has in talent is obvious, Jim, but what they also seem to have in chemistry and likability, that also makes a difference on the floor, too. That's a great point, and I think if anybody roots against any single Milwaukee Buck, they're off the mark because (laughs) every one of these guys is a great guy, and the key to this team, one of the big keys this year has been the camaraderie and the fact that they truly get along, like each other, hang out together. Uh, It's been enjoyable to watch that because it's pretty rare in this league where you get 15 players or 17 during the regular season where there are no problems between the guys, and there has been nothing this year. And that's a credit to Coach Budenholzer and his staff. But more than that, it's a credit to the players that John Horst has put together here and to the players themselves. That's been a huge factor in all of this. Talking with Jim Paschke, the TV play-by-play voice of the Bucks. Jim, you mentioned that the Bucks haven't played in a week. But really, through the first two rounds, they've played nine games, and I think their closest margin of victory was seven points. They have... They have cruised right through the first two rounds. Is that more a case of they've run into a couple of teams that they just match up well against and and they had a couple of easy rounds? Or 
are the Bucks just that good that they are uh, putting a beat down on on good teams? Right now, it seems like the latter to me. Boston last August was supposed to be the best team in the East, and the Bucks were going to challenge that. It turned out to be the opposite way. The Bucks ended up being the team with the most victories, and now Toronto the second most victories in the league uh, comes in here for round three. So it's going to get tougher, but so far it has been dominance on the part of the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, the last time Milwaukee had a championship team was 1971, and that was a very statistically dominant team, one of the most dominant teams in the history of this league. And this team, all season long, they were doing things that forced us to compare them to 71, and they compare favorably. It has been dominant. Now, will that continue against Toronto? I think it'll be a, a better test with the Raptors. That's a good basketball team. Uh, there's so many different ways to look at this. The benches, all of that. The Bucks bench has been fantastic. Toronto has a great bench, but it hasn't performed well, particularly in the last round against Philadelphia. So there's a lot going on here, but uh, so far it's been Milwaukee being just a better team, and uh, they're counting on that continuing, but we'll see. Jim, you had mentioned a, a little bit earlier about Mike Budenholzer, and I wanted to talk more about that for some of us who don't get a chance to watch the Bucks on a game-by-game basis every season. What was the biggest thing you saw with Mike Budenholzer and how he turned this team around and made took it basically from an eight seed to a one seed? You know, there have been coaches who have had San Antonio experience come through Milwaukee for a time. This is the first time that I've watched and, and worked with and paid attention to a coach with that pedigree for an entire season. And there's something to whatever they learn in San Antonio because it's been so different. Uh, He came in and simplified the system here, uh, both offensively and defensively, made it very easy for the players. They had to do two things or three things on offense, another two or three things on defense at the start of the season, and they had that as their base. And then from there they build and they layer and they get more complicated but it worked extremely well. And then the way they handle players. Um, every day they give the players what they call their daily vitamins. That's individual work. Uh, they just make it light and fun, but it's very efficient. There are no wasted minutes in any practice. And then the key thing this year has been the minutes. If you look at the minutes the Bucks have played, they're all way down from last year. Giannis is fresh moving into this third round of the playoffs. Everyone is fresh. They've done a masterful job in controlling all of that. And the Bucks have, uh, knock on wood, been fairly healthy throughout the course of the season. And that's a credit to uh, the program here. So there's something to what Mike Budenholzer picked up in San Antonio and has brought here. And he has done a fantastic job. He has to be the coach of the year, in my opinion. Jim, you know, the Bucks are still a relatively new team to the playoffs. And a lot of time throughout history, you see whether uh, it was the Bulls over Detroit, uh, other teams that just kind of they, they mash and mash against the wall until they finally break through. When you look at this Bucks team, is there a sense of, I, I hate using the term, but Jim, I, I think you know uh, what I mean by this. Not not that they're, they, they just, What's the word I'm looking for? They, the, the pressure's not going to get to them because, quite frankly, uh, they're not experienced enough to feel that pressure. Do you get that feeling that this team just doesn't doesn't care enough about pressure to where they could just push through either way? Well, history tells us, as you pointed out, that you have to take your lumps before you can succeed at this level of the playoffs. Michael Jordan had to do it. LeBron James had to take a hit before he could win. Typically, that's what happens. So, of course, those of us who have been around a long time have that in the back of our minds. But we also have to remember on the front end of what Golden State is doing over the last few years, they kind of came out and won without that experience. So it can be done. It's somewhat rare. Uh, The 2004 Detroit team was able to, uh, they got beat up a little bit, but, you know, they they won without a superstar. So you never know what's going to happen. Uh, The Bucs are confident. The one thing that I like, and this is really, this goes deep into Wisconsin sports history, they always say every day, we don't really concern ourselves with what the opponent is going to do. We worry about ourselves, and that's that's Green Bay Packer football right there. You know, that goes way back in this state. If you can run your offense or you can go about your game plan without considering necessarily what the opponent is doing that's the goal and if you can execute that you're probably going to do pretty well 
And this Bucks team has taken that on all season long. They say it's about us. It's not about Toronto. It's not about Boston. It's about how we play. I like that, and it has worked. So it'll be interesting to see if they can uh, pull something off here that typically requires some angst and some disappointment. We'll see if they can do it. The Bucks, to me, were far and away the best team in the league this year. They go up against a team that finished with the second-best record in the Raptors. Is there something that uh, you think the Raptors might be able to do the, to make this a series in a way that we haven't seen through the first two rounds? Oh, sure. I, I have been researching this for a week now, and, and you know you see little things. I see little things that I go, oh, that's interesting. For instance... In the three games that uh, Kawhi Leonard and Giannis were on the court together, uh, Toronto outscored Milwaukee by 19 points. I don't know the total of minutes. It was, you know, whatever it was in three games when they were both on the floor. Uh, I see that and I go, okay, you know, that's a little thing that you have to keep an eye on. Um, Sure. Uh, In the one game that Toronto beat Milwaukee out of the four they played, they had four or five players that had big numbers. So if they could put that together, it becomes tougher for the Bucs. Um, Giannis played well, very well against Toronto all season in the three games he played in. It, it's just going to be uh, very interesting to see who comes to play, how many come to play on both of these teams. And uh, it might boil down to others in this series. And Toronto, uh, I'm sure if it comes down to that, they are wondering if they can find others after the Philadelphia series because that was a Kawhi Leonard series. The non Kawhis probably would have to do more to beat the Bucks, I would think. Jim, I'm going to ask you, as we're talking to Jim Paschke, Bucks TV voice, I'm going to ask you the question you probably get asked more than any other question outside your market, but i got to ask you, how fun is it? How fun is it to watch a player like Giannis? Well, he's different than any player that I've ever watched and, and called games for because he is so quick and unpredictable. I mean, he's thunder and lightning, and the lightning catches you off guard because you'll be – talking about something else and all of a sudden you know he has a monster jam and and you're going oh boy okay he got me again um he, he's so explosive and uh, he, he's phenomenal i mean there have been players in the league across history that have been pretty incredible but uh Giannis has to be right there with them in, in just raw physical explosive ability and uh it's amazing to watch and then the way he goes about his business every day has been phenomenal too i i would, of course was uh, had the pleasure of meeting him the first day he was here, and I've, I've you know, watched him every day and, and uh, enjoyed him as an 18-year-old who was new to our country and didn't know what a, you know, he, he had never had lobster. Uh, you know, he, he, he didn't have smoothies before he got <laughs> here and loved those. Everybody knows that story. Yep. Uh, it's been a joy. It's been an absolute joy. And as great as he is as a player, I would say, so far that he has been as great or greater as a human being. Just a wonderful, wonderful kid. I want to stay on Giannis for just one second. He's obviously very popular uh, within kind of the NBA community, both with fans and players. You look at Milwaukee right now, you have Aaron Rodgers, a perennial MVP candidate and the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. You get uh, Christian Yelich, an outstanding player for the Brewers, won an MVP last year. But then you've got Giannis, who might win the MVP this year in the NBA. Is he the most popular athlete in Milwaukee right now, you think? Well, that's a great question. Uh, Rogers uh, is pretty popular, and Yelich is, you know, I I don't know if I could uh, tell you which one was the most popular, but think about what you just said. In one small, populous state, three MVPs, and they were all in the building last week when the Bucs... closed out Boston. I mean, it's phenomenal, and people were going crazy about that. Just the fact that uh, you can say that about the state of Wisconsin right now is pretty incredible, and um, every one of those players is fantastic, and and Giannis, uh, I believe, will add his name to the MVP ranks in this state, and uh, he's very popular. The thing about him that that I notice, and I I try to watch things, uh, I'm sitting on the bus before we go to games, outside the hotel, and Giannis will come out, and there's always a crowd uh, trying to get his autograph. And without fail, without fail, I've never seen him walk by that group without signing. He signs every day, and uh, to me, that says an awful lot. 5.30 tonight, Raptors and Bucks from Milwaukee. I, for one, am rooting for you, Team Jim, and uh, I appreciate you spending time with us today. Good luck in the series, and uh, hopefully, uh, hey, you guys make the finals. Hopefully, we'll be talking again. 
Wouldn't that be great? I'd be happy to do that. I'd be pleased to talk to you again if we're in the finals, and uh, pleased to talk to you anytime. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much. That's Jim Paschke. You're listening to The Drive.